Hey, this is Isar with UX in Motion. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you a great workflow that takes you from sketch to After Effects. Now, as you know, I focus exclusively on UX training for After Effects, but I've had enough people reach out and be like, dude, how do I get from sketch to After Effects? So I sat down and I put together a workflow here that I think works great. It's a little hacky, but it's fast. So the good news is that it works. The bad news is that you're gonna need some Adobe tools like After Effects, uh, which you already have because you're watching this, but you'll, you'll also be needing Photoshop and Illustrator as well. So that's kind of the bad news. The good news is that it works and it looks great and you get to keep your uh, shapes being editable and your text, you can work with it live in After Effects and Photoshop, which is a great, cool thing. So let's get started. So first thing I did, and full confession here guys, like I am, dude, I am not a sketch user. Like I love After Effects because I can do whatever I want. And you know, the value that I kind of teach with this workflow is that you can, you can think outside the box and with these, you know, apps like Sketch and stuff, they're great for prototyping, but there's some of those uh, out of the box, never before seen things can be kind of tricky to pull off, which is why I love using After Effects. But I know a lot of people really enjoy using Sketch and it's fast, it's a great, a great little program. Now, again, like I'm, I haven't even used it. I, I honestly haven't used it before today. So I had to download the free trial right here and install it and uh, check it out. It's a, it's fun. It's you know plug and play. I, I love it. It's just not really my tool. But that being said, this workflow is totally rock solid. It kicks ass. So I downloaded this from the uh, BohemianCoding.com/sketch <laughs> website. Sweet. And of course, you can buy the app for $99. Now, again, if you're not, not sure what I'm even talking about and why this workflow is cool, you know, I've got a dribble set of shots. I've got 348 shots right now of awesome animated GIFs that were almost entirely made inside of After Effects. And, you know, a, a lot of people love this stuff. It's a great online community and it's just a really, really cool, fun thing. So again, if you're not sure, you can go through my whole board. It's uh, dribble.com slash isara slash buckets, and you'll find it right there. And again, there's just a ton of shots. It's the largest collection, I think, online right now of animated UI GIFs. Anyway, it's cool. So here's what I did. So because, like I said, I've never used Sketch before, right? So I Googled Sketch free resources. I found this, this website, sketchappsources.com. I downloaded the free shopping app template here, boom, and that's the file that I have right here. And I popped open, uh, I popped open this guy right here, this bag sketch file right here, and that's what we're looking at inside of Sketch. Okay, so here we are inside of Sketch. Let's get over and make this a really cool working After Effects file. So, first thing I did was I selected the artboard here. Well, I <laughs> let's just say first. First thing I did is I experimented a lot and I tried a lot of things and I found out what works and what doesn't work. Okay, so that's the first thing. But when you're ready to export, you want to click your, uh, I guess this is your page or work uh, like area screen thing here. Make sure that's selected. You can see it's been uh, selected here. Now you want to export an SVG. And so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going from sketch into Illustrator and prepping the file there and then either going directly into After Effects from Illustrator or going into Photoshop and then After Effects. And you'll see why. It's just a way of cleaning up the file a little bit more and just making it more friendly if you need to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and export at this SVG. Great, I'm just gonna keep that name. That's fine, save that. Okay, and it's fast, right? Boom, done. Okay, so now I'm gonna open this up in Illustrator. And I've set my computer up so the SVGs automatically open up like that. But you can also do an open with, you know, boom, or you can just go directly into Illustrator and open it up directly. So I'm gonna get, do that. And there you go. Now, here's the deal. And this is why this workflow is important is because you wanna basically split this out into layers, right? Um, you can't do that from sketch itself, it doesn't work like that. Now the cool thing with this is you have all your vectors here, your, your shapes as vectors, and your type is actually live as well. It's just all grouped, right? You can see in my layers palette here, 
that this is all one layer. So if I was to import this now into After Effects, it would just come in as one flat layer. If I was to Im import that into Photoshop, it'd be one flat layer and that's just not useful at all. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna ungroup it. So if I hit Command Shift G on the Mac, you can go into Objects, uh, Ungroup here, and I'm just gonna hit that a bunch of times, like, like 10 times, okay? And basically what I've done is I've now released all of these shapes into sublayers inside of Illustrator. And this this is a weird thing and I know a lot of you don't don't you won't recognize this workflow. This is a workflow I teach for prepping your UX design files inside of Illustrator when you're going to After Effects, right? So I know a lot of you just work in uh, Photoshop and that's cool and I teach that workflow too. I prefer working in Illustrator just because I love the tools. It's a great design program, but it's not really, it does support layers, but it isn't inherently layers based like Photoshop. So you have to create layers from your file and this is the way to do it. And it's a little hacky and it's a little strange, but this works. This is a champion little hacky workflow. Okay, so once these are all done, you basically select your, your master layer here, right? And you have all your assets selected here. They have to be selected. Now you find this little menu in the corner here in your layers palette, and you go layers, release to, release to layers sequence. And you're probably thinking like, what does that even mean? I don't even know, to be honest with you, why they call it that. All it does is it takes them from sub layers into, I guess, layers that aren't, sub layers but are still inside the main layer. Now this is the first half of the workflow, you're not done here. The next step you do, and you can actually visually see this now, you can see that all of the layers now have their own colors, right? And if you see here, they've been released to sub layers or whatever you call it, doesn't really matter. But the important thing to know is that you're not done. These layers still exist under this main layer here and if you were to import this file into After Effects, it would still come in as just one layer. So now we just click the whole shebang and we drag it up until it is above this layer one here. Boom. And now you've created all of these layers from your assets and now this bottom layer will be blank because that was your layer one and you can uh, delete that. And at this point you can go through and name your layers if, if you want. But the important thing is you can see that everything is now on its own layer, which is awesome. And now we're done. That's it, you're done. So now, I can do a uh, save as, save this as a Illustrator file. Boom, boom, you know, all this stuff's fine, whatever, okay. And I can go into After Effects and go import, boom, find my Illustrator file here. Make sure you're on composition, retain layer sizes, that's important. Open that, it's gonna think about it. And you can double click your uh, composition and now you're inside of after Effects and you have all your assets on layers and it looks really really clean. It looks great now You know I've gone through and I've checked this out and almost everything translates really well You will see like a little error here So you may have to do a little bit of cleanup work. You just want to spot check it But in general, I was like kind of blown away. I was like damn dude, that's clean and uh, You know you, you can just go through and you can start creating your prototype inside of After Effects now, that's good enough for most of you. You'll be like, okay, awesome, that's totally sweet. Now I'm just gonna bust a move inside of After Effects. Well, I actually wanna take it one step further because actually you'll notice one of the issues here is that, and this, you know, again, this may be good enough for most of you. Here's one of the things that I don't like about this. I don't have live text. So After Effects is cool because you can just type and have live text, right? And have it be like, whatever you want and then you can change that and so if your project updates you can update your your text inside of your video and have it be live now some of you just may not need that and you're like whatever dude but if you do want that i do want to show you the workflow where you take this into photoshop clean up the file keep the text live so when you bring it into after effects you can totally work with it and i think that's awesome so i'm just going to delete these layers and what i'm going to do is go back into illustrator now okay so here we are and instead of just going into After Effects, I'm gonna export my file, boom, as a PSD, right? Go boom, Photoshop, PSD, awesome. Now check this out, you wanna make sure you've got your right layers and preserve text editability on. This is fine too, that's great, I'm gonna hit okay. I'm just gonna write this. Okay, so now I can go into Photoshop and go boom, open this guy up, and you'll see 
that it has written all the layers. Now, one of the things that's kind of annoying is that it creates all of these layer groups. So when you bring those into After Effects, just like it is now, what'll happen is you'll have your live type here, which is great, but you'll have all these pre-comps. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Uh, you can sign up for my uh, rapid prototyping with After Effects training and it covers all of this stuff. But for now, just know that it's just kind of a messy file and it's hard to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ungroup all of these layers here. So you can just select all your layers in uh, Photoshop, hit one and then hold down shift and click the bottom one and then just hit, hit command shift G once or twice and that will actually delete all of your groups but keep your layers there. So now I've got just the layers and you can see that these layers, this type now is actually type inside of Photoshop. So now if I go ahead and save that, boom, and I go back into After Effects, I can import the PSD, make sure I'm on when it's on the import to composition retain layer sizes. Boom, open. And you want to keep the editable layer styles checked. That's great. Boom, double click it. Now you'll see that nothing is different, right? This is like kind of the first step here. You'll see that nothing is different except that when you select your text layers, so right now, by default, when, um, when you import a Photoshop file into After Effects, that has text on it in Photoshop, it comes into After Effects just as a shape. But what you can do is you can actually do a Command A to uh, select all and then do a, a Control click and select the Convert to Editable Text. This is awesome. So you click that, boom. You'll notice nothing really happens here except your icons now in your layers palette, the ones with text on them, now have a little T and it actually gives you the, uh, the, the text that's inside of it. So now I'm in After Effects, I can just double click this and say, yo homie, and that's my new button there next to my payment and complete. I've got a yo homie. I don't know exactly what content's gonna go in that section, but it seems really important. Um, so that's the workflow. Boom, you have a clean file. You can see that, sure, it's a little tedious, especially if uh, you have a bunch of screens, but if you need this in a pinch, uh, and if there's something that's just not working out in Sketch and you want to prototype it in After Effects using 3D or like really tweaking your velocity curves or just doing something that's really challenging to do for you in Sketch, uh, you can now just create a, a perfectly working source file, bring it into After Effects and create an awesome video prototype using the tools here, which are unlimited. Um, so I hope you got some value out of this. Again, this is the first time I've ever done this. I've tested it out. It seems to work every single time. You know, uh, some of the filters don't translate that well, so you have to play around with it, but it's definitely it has a bunch of value here um, for a lot of you. Uh, drop me a comment. I'm just really curious if it works out. If I'm a total loser and I don't understand something that's really important, just let me know, because uh, that'd be good to know. And if you find any opportunities here to just improve on this, I'd love to know that too, because uh, like I said, you know, I don't focus on other app workflows into After Effects. I pr pretty much deal inside of the Adobe ecosystem, but dude, I don't know. A lot of people have been like, hey man, I want to get side After Effects from Sketch. So here you go. If you want more training, you can definitely go ahead and purchase the uh, Rapid Prototyping with After Effects training. There's a bunch of lessons there and I'll take you through everything you need to know to create just kick-ass video prototypes. And if you want to get notified when I post more free content and lessons like this, you can uh, sign up for my mailing list and I'll only send you cool stuff, I promise. Uh, no spam, nothing like that, because I know that sucks. All right, and thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.